Hello, welcome to the Predictive Neural Nets Analysis with Rapid Minor Tutorial. This is Reza Wazi and this tutorial is loosely based on Dr. Matthew Norse's Data Mining for Masses book. Similar to the previous tutorials, I have already imported the data files that we are going to use for uh, Neural Networks Analysis. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. We have neural nest training and neural nest scoring. I dragged and dropped uh, both of them into the process window and I'm going to rename them. So Okay, now let's run the training and see what do we have here and meanwhile get to know our data a little bit better and gain a better business understanding of what do we want to accomplish okay let's go to the statistics tab here we have a total of 19 attributes which two of them are special attributes if you look at here and 17 of them are regular attributes that are used in our predicting task so let's take a look at the two that are special attributes so before we get a better data understanding let's understand what do we want to accomplish through this neural network analysis we have a sport team uh, who wants to recruit two to four players to win the championship this year or maybe to improve their team uh, the goal of this analysis is to come up with a short list of two to four players to be contacted out of 59 players that are in the market this year. And based on the past performance, uh, we know that performance in one area such as a scoring is often interconnected with other areas such as defense or fall. And the best athletes generally have a strong connections between two or more performance areas while more typical athletes have a strengths in one area but weaknesses in other areas so we want to use the data from past we already have data uh, uh, on uh, current players in the professional league and we know that how they have been doing we want to use this data in order to predict the future performance of the players who are in the draft and now let's get to understand our data a little bit better as i said we have 819 attributes two of them i already flagged as the special attributes and 17 regular attributes we have player name which is the specific player name and is used as ID. And then we have team value, uh, which is our label variable or target variable is something that we want to predict. For team value, we have four values. We have role player, uh, which refers to an athlete who is good enough to play at the professional level and may be really good in one area but he's not or she's not excellent uh, player overall and then we have contributor contributor is an athlete who contributes across several categories of defense and offense and can be counted on to regularly help the, help the team to win and we have franchise player which is a kind of an athlete uh, with skills so broad strong and consistent that the team will want to hang on them for a long time if they can these players are of a great talent level that they can form the foundation of a really good team and a really good competitive team and then we have superstars these are the rare individuals that are very gifted and they are superior to others and they can make a difference in every game most teams in the league can only afford to have one such player but if they can have more than one they are usually a contender for the league title now let's go ahead and use our training data which is gathered from the players currently at the professional level in order to predict the performance of those in the draft pool 
supposedly these these are fresh out of college or fresh out of high school. I used to think that the data refers to basketball team, but I'm not sure, so sure. So you might have a better idea uh, what kind of a sport this data is referring to. Now, let's go back to our data set and get to know our variables a little bit better. So as you've learned, player name, player value, then we have position ID. Position ID is not an ID here because it actually means something. There are 12 possible positions in this sport. Each uh, one presents an integer from 0 to 11 in the data set. So uh, position ID is actually referring to some specific part of the field and some specific tasks that each player will play. And then we have shots, which is the total of number of shots or scoring opportunities each player took in their most recent season. We have mass and we have makes, which is the number of times the athletes scored when shooting during the most recent season. Personal points is the number of points the athlete personally scored during the most recent season. We have total points, which is the total number of points the athlete contributed to scoring in the most recent season. Assist, which is a defensive statistic indicating the number of times the athlete helped his team get the ball away from the opposing team during the most recent season. And we have concessions, which refers to the number of times the athletes play directly caused the opposing team to concede an offensive advantage during the most recent season. We have blocks, uh, which refers to the number of times the athlete directly and independently blocked the opposing team shot during the most recent season. We have block assist, uh, which is the number of times an athlete collaborated with a team made to block the opposing team shot during the most recent season. Fouls, the number of times in the most recent season again that the athlete committed a foul. Years pro, uh, which in training data set, uh, it is the number of years the athlete has been playing at the professional level. And then we have all these uh, uh, statistics that we had for the most current season. We have it for the career. We have career shots career makes, career, uh, career PP, TP, assist, concessions, and so forth. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the scoring data set as well. So what should be the major difference between the scoring and training data set? Think about it. The scoring data set lacks the target variable. So as you can see here, we don't have that uh, team value, but we still have player name, uh, which refers to the name of players in the current draft pool. And we have the same uh, variables. The only difference is that instead of years pro here, we have years experience because the athletes in the draft pool, they have not been playing at the professional level. We are just selecting them to play for the professional level. But essentially is a, is a similar or the same attribute that you, as uh, years pro. It tells you how many years they've been playing this sport. Let's close this, these tabs here and go about the modeling. Well, the modeling process is very similar to all the predictive modeling tasks and analysis that you've been doing. So let's look for the neural nets uh, operator. So we have neural net here. We are going to use it on training data and then we are going to use apply model to apply the created neural net model to the scoring data set and give us the results and we can take a look at the model as well let's go ahead and run this okay we encountered that error and the error says the input example set does not match the training example set missing attribute years pro remember in the scoring data set instead of years pro we had years experience here we have a simple fix we can go ahead and use a rename just to rename one attribute old name is years of experience the new name is years underline pro
Okay, now the model should work. Okay, here is the model that you get out of neural nets analysis. And the neural nets uh, use what is called hidden layer to compare all the attributes in the data set and to perform all the calculation. And uh, this is the hidden layer. The circles on the, on the neural net model are called nodes. And the lines between these nodes are called neurons. The thicker the our uh, the thicker and the darker the neuron between two no, uh, between two nodes, the stronger the affinity between the nodes. The graph begins on the left side, and each circle on the left side and the input side represents one of your attributes. And then you have the hidden layer, and then you have the output. Well, which the each circle in the output represents one of the outcomes in your target variable if you are having a discrete or categorical target variable as i said the model does not really tell you much about the process or the real logic behind creating these affinities or these uh, relationships it just uh, tries to find the best relationships and best ways now let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Here you have the results. You can go ahead and, for example, sort your results based on the superstar. We have few players that are identified as superstars in our uh, scoring data set. We expect them to be superstars. And we can use this list to identify few players that we want to contact. Again, similar to any other predictive analysis, this is just another piece of information for you to make a better and more informed decision. If you are the coach and if you are in charge of uh, selecting players, you probably have many years of experience and you have a good understanding of which player is a potential superstar which player is not so this analysis just helps you to reaffirm what you already suspect or to dot what uh, or or to introduce dot to one of your firm decisions that this person is going to be a superstar uh, that's what you think but the algorithm tells you okay not so much he is more like a franchise player or maybe worse he is like a role player so it's just another piece of information for you or for your boss to make better decision you should never ever completely rely on computer output for decision making and you should always take the results with a grain of salt or with a grain of doubt that these are not always accurate and you will see uh, how you can calculate the model accuracy and the model performance in the next lesson uh, which is the cross validation okay this concludes the tutorial on neural networks analysis using rapid minor